Hi, I'm Thierry Besselink. I live in Amsterdam on the water and I'm an educator and an urbanist. And I focus most of my time on making learning communities that um, try to have some sort of impact in society. That can be in education or um, just in the bioregions that we find ourselves in. And I really want to thank you for these questions because I think they are very, very pertinent at this moment. So how do we focus on the collective rather than the individual, I think is a very important question. I mean, in many ways I believe that we are actually witnessing a return to the collective in, in some way or another. You know, this pandemic has been making us aware of the kind of interrelationships that we all depend on. Like, within a matter of days, we could actually feel in our skin that we depend on people and people's behavior on the other side of the world. All of a sudden, um, we were no longer individuals. All of a sudden, um, we sort of became a collective body. And it was strange to be a collective body all of a sudden. But also interesting, I mean, I think collective bodies, they, collective bodies, bodies in, in, in general, they, they live, right? They, and they die, and they grow. And being a part of that and trying to sense where am I in this and what am I going to do? What is my place in it? What do I dare doing? What is my responsibility? And feeling that so close by, I think, is a, you know, is a, is a, is a pivotal moment. Because we've been growing up in a culture that basically sees collective resources, um, collective institutions, you know, like democracy or education, um, natural resources, as just the things that you can freely sort of take and use for your private goals. Um, but that, that strategy no longer, no longer works, does it? So, in a way, this focus has been done for us, and in a way, we are witness witnessing the end of, like, you know, the individual. Um, now, how do we, in education, do this? I mean, I believe that it is a context that is real, that makes us a collective. It's not a, you know, you don't, like, it's not like putting, your, putting a group of students together and, you know, you guys do an assignment um, and here you go, now you have a collective. That makes no sense. Right? There's no reason to be together. A collective forms because there is a context that demands, that has the urgency, um, demands you to, to be together because you are interdependent. Right? I mean, a collective depends on uh, the giving to one another because you have to give to each other, because you've bounded in fate. That's big. I mean, you know, that that is something for you know for for an educational institution to 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 sort of almost artificially create. That is hard. I mean, uh, but at the same time, I think it has been made quite easy, because we can no longer hide within our educational walls of the classroom, right? I mean, the the outside world is penetrating those worlds um, um, quite drastically. Uh, you know, this whole pandemic, you know, is within a, a much larger transformation that is happening to our ecosystems, our economic systems, our social systems, and so forth, um, that we cannot just keep outside, right? So there's reasons enough, and I believe that if your education and if our education systems are no longer based in, you know, subsistence, they become, they become irrelevant, right? I mean, if... Um, we are just busying ourselves with just-in-case knowledge. It's over. And for many institutions, that will exactly be the case. Uh, but maybe I'll s try to say something about that later. Um, in my practice, um, I always work with learning communities. And what makes this a learning community is something that shares a fate, um, something that creates a sense of belonging. Um, and a sense of belonging yeah, belonging is something fundamental because it is not just, you know, I'm part of a community, but it is, a, you know, participating in a place, in a, in a people that misses you when you're not there, right? Or that you long for if you are not there. 
Um, and in a, in a deeper sense, I suppose that what I try to do with my students is not just give them a tip of a, a kind of a, a belonging um, to each other, but that they actually start to feel a belonging to this to this earth, right, to this place. Uh, because if if you if you start caring for a place, if you start belonging to a place, you start caring for it, right? You start to be interested in how it works. You want to understand it. You want to relate to it. You want you become attentive to it, to its needs and to its workings. You know, you start seeing its patterns, um, and uh, you start seeing its beauty, or you start to want to create beauty in it. Um, so, do we or do we not belong in this world, in this earth? Do we or do we not belong in this institution, in this you know educational institution, to this group? And what would it make so? Right, just asking that question. You know, who who, are, who? Yeah, who are we going to be? Such that we're going to belong here. And that is about recognizing that you participate in a community and in something that is bigger than you, right? So, to give you an example, a program that I very much love at the moment is what I do at the University of Utrecht. Um, we made a program for regenerating society bioregions. Um, and I took my students to Sicily. Um, it, we, uh, we as staff have a, we have a farm, a biological olive farm there. And um, the river basin within which that is placed, you know, has all the problems of the world. Um, you know, there's massive amounts of refugees, you know, uh, coming ashore. There's there's degradation of the soil. There's bushfires. There's um, you know incredible unemployment. All the youth is moving out. There's there's corruption. There's a lot of garbage on the street. There's pollution in the rivers. There's hardly any drinking water. Uh, there's economic, you know, th there's so much going on. And all of these things are interconnected. And basically, this is a sort of a microcosm of the world that we are in. Um, so we first spend time studying this place, you know, its economics, its social dynamics, its, its place, and um, making maps. And, and, and the students have been doing research from a distance. And then we went there. And all of this research all of a sudden sort of became irrelevant. I mean, maybe not exactly irrelevant, but seen through a very, very different lens. And so they um, immersed themselves in that community, connected with, you know, and, and spent time, quality time, with, you know, the, the priests, the farmers, the politicians, the, you know, the, the elderly, the, the schools, the, you know, the rivers, the animals. Um, and, and for a long time, just immersed and participated in that place, trying to see what makes it tick, what makes it beautiful, what makes it, um, you know, makes it being in pain. Um, and out of that, um, that's not just learning goals that come out of that, right? I mean, there's a lot of serendipitous learning and discovering and development happening happening there. And you cannot, before you go, exactly know what we're going, what is going to happen. That's one of the major shifts that we, as a educational institutions, will have to make. You know, have this space for this emergent learning. Um, but what we try to do there is that we become part and participate and become aware of what we are part of um, in terms of the different communities, because it is not just each other as a collective, but as all these other collectives of other beings, you know, of rivers, um, of 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 other beings that we have. We are a part of, um, and we will never have a focus on that collective if we do not experience it. Right? This is this is about a collective experience. Um, so it's not an abstract kind of knowledge. Right? It's not about an idea. So then the the role of of us as educators um, is quite challenging. Uh, so we. We create conditions for this to happen. We create conditions for learning to happen. We create conditions for particular kinds of, of experiences, of, of, of the use of senses, of you know, um, encounters to happen, and basically to heighten those experiences and to make them reflective. Right? Um, but all along, we are very much in the dark 
um, as well, because we do not know exactly what is going to happen when we have these encounters. We've been in the forest before, but we don't know which particular route uh, we will have to take this time, since it's dark and we can't really see either. Um, and living in that vulnerability and that, um, that uncertainty, that not knowing, together with the students, create an adventure and a meaning and a realness and an aliveness that is very difficult to construct in any sort of formalistic way, right? Um, and it binds you together. It binds you together and it binds you to the places and the experiences that you're having. That's where collectives are formed. That's where individuals um, raise above themselves, right? become bigger than that. Um, so, wh so what is needed is that you realize very quickly as an educator that you cannot just teach this. Right? You will have to go and live that same process of getting lost and refining yourself, of uh, you know, dealing with the uncertainties and actually diving into the questions, opening up uh, puzzles, um, you know, taking risks with the students. And at the same time, holding this containment in which that risk can be taken. I mean, you have to create the risk in the first place, because otherwise none of the interesting stuff will happen. And at the same time, making it safe enough for people to be vulnerable and step into that and actually be willing to um, let go of some of the things and some of the ideas or the identities that they're holding or maybe the worldviews that they may be holding, uh, that's challenging. Because also, again, that is something we as staff have to live. Otherwise, how can they ever learn it? That also means um, which was very much an experience I had. It is something that I need to get insp inspired for too. You know, I need to tap into a source of inspiration before I can actually be a mentor on a journey like this. Um, so what you will see is that you have an organism that emerges out of these, these interactions the students and how they work together, um, you know, the staff, the people that you meet, and the places that you meet together form a sort of organism. And maybe you know that out of practices, which is when you, when you come in the room and the students are working, you sort of feel the mood, or you, th or you feel the panic, or you feel the lostness, or the, or the you know, the disconnectedness, or the, you know, the dedication. And, and uh, this gives you a thermometer into like the health of the system, so to speak, and, and, and uh, crafting that sense um, uh, to be able to intervene in, in it, like a doctor or like a, um, yeah, I don't know, a therapist, but, you know, don't become therapists. Um, it's, I think, um, a skill that we as in educational institutions and, and educators will have to, have to learn to master. So how to create and focus on the, on the collective rather than the individual is very much to do with having a very good reason. Um, uh, having a, a, a reality that binds you together, a fate that binds you together, something in which you are interdependent. And if you're not, and if it is just an assignment that comes from above, it makes no sense. I mean, it, it creates a temporary you know, work ethic, but it doesn't create a collective.